Welcome back to the Craster Shop. I'm Mike. You guys all know Jerry. How's it going, Jerry? I'm doing good. And you know, I'm really excited tonight because we're able to bring you a new video from a gentleman named Kyle, and he lives in Rawlings, Wyoming. This gentleman is not only an avid craw fisherman, Mike, but he's an avid sportsman as well. It's amazing. Check out some of the pictures of Kyle with his deer, his antelope, his fish. Check it out, guys. Wow, so you, can you believe all the pictures that Kyle shared with us there? What a sportsman, that's great. And you know, Mike, it, it kind of reminds me here that you were telling me a while back about uh, the first caves that you and your dad put together. Can you share a little bit of that history with us? You know what, over 40 years ago, I've never shared this with you guys, over 40 years ago, I visited my dad's house not too long ago. This is a trap my dad and I made over 40 years ago. We couldn't even buy traps where we were at the time. And my dad and I, we put together these primitive traps, and he took me out crawfishing when I was a little kid. I just loved it. And then Jake and I later, you know, we started crawfishing. You guys know that story. We started making really great traps. Now, one thing I really like, Kyle is amazing. He's a lot like us. You know, we cut those traps you buy in the store. They just aren't any good. Kyle, actually, this is actually a trap that Kyle made. He sent me one of his traps for this video. He perfected the traps. Man, what are we gonna do next, Jerry? You know what, we're gonna go on a walkabout with Kyle. What Kyle does is he mounts a GoPro on his hat, and we're gonna go watch him while he pulls a few of his traps. Oh man, you're not gonna believe it. He only pulls three traps. You're not gonna believe the crawfishing action you're gonna see. Now, after you watch this, we're gonna go, and Kyle's gonna have a sit down with us, and he's gonna tell you about his bait he uses, about how he makes his traps. He's really gonna help people out on the Craster channel fish for crawfish better. Now come with us on the, on the walk about Kyle. Uh, now one thing I have noticed in fishing in repeated spots is if you come out here and you catch a bunch and you catch a bunch of big ones and the next time you'll fish in that spot, it'll be a bunch of little ones. I think you catch all the big ones out, and then all the tiny ones get to move in because all the big dominant ones are gone. Uh, so we'll see if that's true here. It has been a week. Typically, that's when I fish a place, you know, two days in a row or every other day is when that happens. Doesn't seem to have affected them too much, though. There are some awfully big ones in there. So, and see those, those little spikes in there. I swear that if those weren't in there, that every single one of these would be caught. I was actually fishing with a buddy last weekend when we caught the ones for that humongous boy like him. And, uh, He had just some ones that he had gotten for free. He'd never actually been out prey fishing before. Then. There were some friends of ours who were moving and he got some for free from them. And they were just your general run of the mill store bought metal with metal combs. And when we came back the next day, I think he only had three or four left in his. And they just had all left. Um, and mine were loaded, you know, so. They are pretty proven. Um, I only set three traps last night because due to our success last time, um, we were actually only boiling worth, planning the boil with two or three different other families, or one or two other families, I guess, two or three including us, and um, we actually had to greatly expand that, which was awesome. We got to get a lot of people in on it. So you can see there, 
Um, yeah, and so this time I only set three because we don't have a big boil planned. And all the ones here are just massive. I mean, they're, you really don't catch hardly any tiny ones out of this place. Just big bodies, big tails, lots of meat in them. So yeah, really good first, first pot. Oops. Let's go get the other two. Oh crap, well, apparently the door fell open on this one, so I guess I've got to review that and figure out why the heck that happened. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and dump these two back. Dang, well that stinks. The last thing I didn't talk about last night with my trap design is, oh there's still a really tiny one in there. This was the latest version that I built, these big ones. Now, the only thing that was hindering me at this point, now that we had the escape stoppers, was when they would get built up to the point where they could just crawl over each other to get out. And so, look at that little fella. So I decided, you know, a, a bigger trap diameter would equal better crayfish. Oh, he just might be a contender for the small fella. Yeah, that's about the only thing I'm not real happy on my traps right now is the door closures. I don't really... I use some elastic bands from Walmart and they seem to uh, really lose their elasticity really quick and they're not really durable so I need to figure out a different way of keeping those doors shut. Hasn't bit me yet before but sure did last night. Oh well though, this lake is honestly too good. Yep, here's another really heavy one. Wow, all right. Catch, it's tough to say too many crayfish, but we live in a town like Rollins. Yeah. Get back up to the car and take a look in this one here. Last time, yeah, look at all those guys. Man. You see with this bigger trap diameter, they're not even close up to the these little prickles that keep them from escaping. But yeah, if we didn't have there's a couple MVPs at our six family boil last weekend. That if we didn't have them there, I don't know if we'd have finished them all off. But we had one guy from Louisiana, so you know he ate a bunch, and then another from Nebraska who was really loving it. Just about half a cooler, maybe slightly less. And that's off just two traps at this point. And man, I'm kind of glad we didn't get any in that third one. <laughs> You'd have to put them all back, anyways. There's a big one right there. But yeah, I, I also promised that, you know, if, if those. Those little prickles weren't around that door. And none of these guys would be left in here. Coming out here at 7 a.m. the next morning. 
I've always wanted to try coming out at like 10 or 11 at night after I set them. Leave them in for just a couple hours. I bet, uh, I bet you can you know, close to twice as many. But because they, the only thing that hinders the traps is when they're high enough to walk over each other to get out. But without that, I think you catch a ton. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much my basis footage for today. But real successful night. This is just an awesome lake. I've never even fished that half of the dam. I'd like to get down by the boat ramp. There's that little, you can maybe see that little kind of finger that sticks out. That's always looked really good to me, but. I mean, I've, I've never even gone past the spillway down there. And, man, just hammering it. That's two traps. Again. That's pretty crazy. Alright, well, I'll get all this packed up and uh, we will catch you guys later. Alright you guys, we made it back down to the Craster cabin. Man, what'd you think about Kyle's crawfishing? Wasn't that amazing guys? Uh, out of two, two out of the three traps he caught crayfish in. He had a little door trouble on that one, one trap, but man that was amazing how many crayfish came out of those. Really was. Now, Kyle's gonna do us an extra special favor. You know, Kyle, when he, he, I had talked to him, he said when he was making his crawfish traps, he'd make it, he'd test it in the creek, he'd watch how the crawfish came out of it, he'd fix problems. He, he went through many generations of traps to make the trap that you saw in the video. Now, he, the favor he's doing is, he's gonna sit down and he's gonna tell us about his bait, about how he makes his traps. It's really cool. Hey, come with us. If you're interested in trap building, you're gonna wanna check this out. Here's Kyle, just sit and tell us all about it. Hello, this is Kyle Spencer from Rollins, Wyoming. And uh, I was just out here on this beautiful day that Wyoming has given us. And uh, I just wanted to take a couple minutes and talk to you a little bit about my traps and the development and what kind of bait I use um, before we do some field footage of them in utilization just so you guys kind of knew what we were talking about um, so first of all for for bait that I use I like to use um, fish and only fish and fresh fish or else fresh frozen uh, crayfish don't really like um, rotten stuff you know a lot of people think that they're they just eat carrion and and they go after rotting stuff kind of like catfish and um, they actually don't they're surprisingly picky eaters um, and so I, I only use uh, fish that I've either caught and I, I use the carcasses off the, the trout that I catch um, I only use fish also from the salmon species Beef line around here. Um, and the the salmon species so trout is in the salmon species so I use the carcasses of the trout that I catch and the reason I use that is it's one very oily and so it really gets out into the water really well and they like it and two uh, you don't want to use things like walleye um, catfish bass because um, those are predatory species that actually eat crayfish and so when they smell them coming around they're not going to be wanting to go that direction towards them otherwise they get eaten they're predisposed to go away from them now when I actually bait my traps I utilize a bait box um, so when I first got into cray fishing a buddy and I decided to, to give it a shot you know we'd seen them in the waters and we, we wanted to try it out and uh, we bought a couple of just the typical um, real basic plastic with plastic cones just right off the internet um, and they're actually plastic and not metal and we, we threw those in there and we actually tested them out in a little creek up by where I like to fish and hunt an area up north of here and we could actually see them we throw them in at night and shine flashlights on them and we could actually watch the crayfish come up to them how they would react and then kind of track their performance throughout the night that way um, and what we found is when we just threw those ones in and they were just again your your basic they had nothing nothing like a like this box that i have in here and we would find that when they were underwater the crayfish would actually just come right up under the bottom when the crate was on 
when the trap was on the bottom and they would eat all the bait from the outside and never actually have to go into the trap. So that was the first step was to get the, the bait up off of the bottom of the trap. Um, and so that's kind of when, when we sparked the development into these traps. And a couple things that I do that are different that we found work out a lot better is we actually went for this fabric or this, this fish netting um, instead of plastic or metal for the comb. And they, the crayfish seemed to, when they were side by side with the other traps, the plastic traps, they really seemed to like walking up the fabric better than they liked walking up the plastic for whatever reason. I don't know if it was the color or the way it felt on their feet, if it just felt unnatural. But a lot of times they would hesitate as they came up to that hard plastic, whereas this they would just walk right up in. Now the selection of netting, um, I actually had to do several iterations of that because we, I initially had a larger net on here and I would find that when I come back the next day they would all have been escaped and I didn't really know why because um, it I mean the holes weren't that big they weren't any more than, than an inch or three quarters of an inch and I couldn't figure out how they were escaping well watching them under the flashlight we actually found that they were able to you know get themselves all collected up and, and squeeze themselves out those little holes in the outside now I don't really understand, like if I had the big claws and the antennas and everything, how I would somehow get myself to be able to squeeze through a three quarter inch hole, but they they do and we actually watched them do it. Um, so that fixed uh, a pretty big problem that I had of coming back the next day and there'd only be like a couple big ones in here. But that didn't solve all of our problems. So I, I pulled the nets out, redid them, got this new net, stuck them back in, and we found that they were still a lot of them escaping and so we watched them under the under the uh, flashlight and most people you know they'll they'll do this cone shape and they think well you know that's good enough well that might be good enough if you're throwing them in and coming back in a half hour or an hour when the bait's not done but if you want to let them soak all night they will get back out of here they are surprisingly crafty escape artists. I never knew going into it how difficult it would be to outsmart a crayfish, but they are really quite intelligent about getting in and out of tight spaces. So we started, we, we started brainstorming, you know, how can we keep them in here? What can we do in order to keep them from getting back out? We thought of um, trap doors, but we didn't we couldn't figure out how to make a trap door that would work, you know, 360 degrees. And we were using the round traps for reasons I'll get to later, but what we ended up landing on eventually was these little, these little prickles in here. I don't know if you can see them real well, but they're just, um, we cut off a piece of the hardware cloth and we would stick them around in, in kind of this flower pattern to keep them from going over it. They don't want to crawl over that because it, it it pokes into their bellies when they're trying to scoot around it and the belly is their, their soft spot. You know, they have the hard back and the soft belly and so they don't like that very much and so it keeps them from just going and crawling right around. Um, but again, when we got these on, we actually were watching them again and some of the smaller ones were able to crawl in between on this little on the little spacing that they get they were able to crawl in between the spaces and actually escape so once again pulled the net completely off the cone completely off um, and added a second layer and you can see they're quite a bit more dense in there now um, added a second layer of those and those have almost completely fixed the problem of them escaping they just the only thing that hinders these traps anymore is when they get so full that they're just walking over the backs of each other to escape. Um, but other than that, they are pretty bomb proof. Um, now, I'll talk about the reason I went with a cylinder trap is because we couldn't figure out, I do most of my fishing in rivers and I do all of it from the shore, even in lakes, but I do most of it from rivers and I couldn't figure out how to toss a trap in that was a, a square shape you know and have it land the correct way 
every single time. Now the the guys at Craster they have nailed the trap design. Theirs are, I mean, theirs are truly bomb proof. They you can get that thing completely full and they can't escape unless one happens to be going out at the same time one is coming in there. Those traps are awesome, but I couldn't figure out how to get them to land straight, and so that's why I did the cylinder trap. Um, so yeah, pretty much the only thing that hinders these anymore is when they get full enough that they're actually able to escape out of the holes when they're just walking over each other's backs. So the most recent development is these ones, and you can see how much bigger the diameter is. And these ones can really outfish these tiny ones. This one is actually the very first one I ever made. And I have three that I made at this smaller size. And then I made three more out of these bigger ones. And these ones really perform. They catch just loads of them. I mean, we can fill entire coolers with, with my six traps. And um, a couple weeks ago, we had a boil that we did for, I think, five or six families out of just these traps is all we got. We had, I had to do them in two batches. I just have a 42 quart pot because I typically don't throw, you know, like massive boils like down south. But yeah, they, I mean, they will out, definitely outperform anything that's out there on the commercial market. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've just, we've had a ton of fun and just kind of developing and figuring out all the different tricks to keep them in. and. It's been, I just had a, a really good time doing it. So actually the last thing that I did um, in modifications on these traps was just have these little string hangers. Um, the ropes on these traps, when you get six of them together in the car and uh, it, they act just like fishing line, you get all your poles together and all these ropes tangled together with the traps on the ends and it just turns into a tangled nightmare of rope and, um, so that was the, the last thing that we did, but I'm pretty happy with them overall, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the field footage. That was some awesome information, Kyle. Thank you so much for sharing that, and we want to welcome you as a new field researcher. Yeah, you know what, Kyle? I've got a bunch of gear I'm going to send you. I've got some creaster traps, got a creaster shirt, a whole bunch of creaster oh, merchandise yeah. and stuff. I'm going to send you a whole package. Wow, you know, it's just great. You know, you're, you really dialed in your, you know, for cylinder traps. You're right, those cylinder traps, the story, they're not like yours. Yours are really successful. One little issue you had, 99% dialed in. I, I got some creaser hooks, and then I use surgical tubing. I'm going to send you enough to put on all your traps, Kyle. Thanks so much, man. It's a pleasure. What are we planning on doing next summer? What are we hoping you know, to do? Well, we're hoping, Kyle, if you'll have us, we want to head out there to Wyoming in your neck of the woods and see if you'll take us out and show us how it's done out there in Wyoming. And you know what, Mike? I was thinking we could maybe even hook him up with a new cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That cooler looks like it's a couple of crawfish trips. Absolutely. Now, if, uh, if you liked our video, like our video. If you really loved our video, you know what? Subscribe to us. You can even be a team member. You can send in footage just like Kyle. Um, you guys have a great day, and we will catch you later.